Welcome back. I need to give my Proxon KT150 compound table some TLC. That means cleaning it in the right spots and lubricating it in the right spots. And hopefully I don't have to, but if required, making some adjustments. If you're looking for a video showing a complete overhaul of that thing that is tearing it down completely and then building it up again from the ground, I have that too. Card here, link in the description. Anyway, let's get started. Enjoy! Let's start by running the uh, top table all the way in one direction. because that will already expose here some grime and stuff on the ways. I personally prefer to use denaturated alcohol and simple kitchen wipes for such cleaning actions. It's the cheapest option, you know. And I'll do the same, of course, here in the dovetail ways and there I expect a lot of dirt yeah, has accumulated. This is not only dirty oil, but these are really small particles from all the milling work. And you have to clean that out from time to time. And the other side too, of course. And you see here, there's really debris coming out here. This is not nice. Then I just flip the whole thing on its back and this will expose here the inner ways. Mm. Please note that these are also guiding surfaces where some <clears throat> shit might have accumulated, like in my case here. But the main attraction and oh yeah, here I even have some metal stuff left. <clears throat> and of course the other side too. And if you see some loose debris in there, chips, whatever, don't be shy to use a vacuum. Now just flipping it around again and moving the top side to the other extreme. Now you could at least the top of the table <clears throat> remove it completely, but uh, we will refrain from that. Oh, uh, maybe not. Removing it completely means you have to, yeah, adjust your dovetail guides again. So no, we won't do that, but you can shove it out quite a bit and expose, not completely, don't shove it out completely. You uh, can expose quite a lot of the internal stuff that way. Maybe a little bit more. <sighs> Getting a little bit adventurous. Okay, that's it. That should be enough. I'm just now rotating it so we can work on it a little bit better. And here uh, it's basically the same. Okay, if maybe I <clears throat> vacuum first and then we start cleaning with the wipes and the alcohol. Okay, cleaning first, then the vacuum. And there's always a lot of gore coming out here. Other side, and there are, yeah, metal chips coming out too. Uh, this will over time really mess up your ways. In this position, we have also exposed the lead screw and the nut of the other axis, so we can clean that too. 
and especially yeah <clears throat> the valleys of the lead screw first just with the wipe and for that i will turn the lead screw off camera here and on the other side You can see here there is still some gore and debris left. You can clean that out with a brush. And you can also put some alcohol on the brush. And <clears throat> Don't forget to clean your brush in between. And finally, uh, let's go in with the vacuum to get out any loose debris. And when we flip that back over again, be careful, this might be loose now. We have the other spindle completely exposed. I wanted to save the other lead screw. Uh, anyway, we can use that opportunity to clean the waste from this side. You see there's also considerable amounts of debris and gore and blah. And now for the lead screw and I totally <laughs> forgot to film that uh, it's already clean but uh, yeah the usual uh, take a wipe alcohol and uh, turn it and you can press into the belly of the lead screw with your fingernail or something and if your fingernails are too short you can always use a brush and then don't forget to <laughs> vacuum out any loose debris and chips. Now I said uh, only necessary adjustments, but yeah, I consider this a necessary adjustment. So we will have to open that grub screw and press this a little bit together and then tighten the grub screw again. Now this is a little bit delicate <clears throat> because if you have too much pressure here then the whole assembly gets too stiff and will get very hard to turn. If you have not enough pressure here between the handle and that ring uh, then you have a lot of backlash. So I used to clamp that down, uh, but that gave me too much pressure. So this time I will just press with my fingers and hope that that's okay. Uh, still turning quite good and it's no longer uncontrollably wobbling around. There must be a little bit of wobble here. Otherwise, this uh, you will get interference with the lead screw and the nut. Now, this is also a perfect opportunity to put fresh grease on everything, at least on that side. And please note, these are also guiding surfaces. <laughs> Now we can flip the whole thing over and do the same with those surfaces here. And now just rotating the handle back to the front, I can hopefully, uh, touched away here. <clears throat> Hopefully shove that back on and then you need a little pressure here at the back and you should be able at one point, hopefully, 
sometimes it requires a little bit more pressure or is fiddly but you should be able okay <clears throat> you might need to apply a little bit pressure here on the spindle to align it the more debris where is that coming from i thought we vacuumed okay now i started the lead screw again in the nut let me shake out that little fizzle here there's a little fucker and after you <laughs> had your uh, greasy fingers on the handles don't forget to clean the handles with some alcohol at the yeah that will be the last step but now we can just screw that back on and feel if it's really going without too much resistance and oh, almost no backlash here that's good and with uh yeah not too much backlash and it's too too greasy to actually grab it like that but oh well, yeah it's possible and you can wipe out any excess grease that can you see that probably not uh that's uh pressing out here of the ways on the other side obviously too maybe i zoom in a little bit yeah there you can see the grease okay that was side one and now we do the same for the lower axis Please note that you cannot detach the lower lead screw from the nut without disassembling the whole thing. So that's the maximum and that position we can actually go. And don't forget those uh, guiding surfaces here. We flip the whole thing around and repeat for the other side. There's a lot of grime here at the other end stop, which will prevent us without disassembly to move uh, that part of the table off. And while we're here, we can also clean the lead screw and I will turn it from, yeah, uh, turn the handle. You won't see it, just wiggling it. And also going a little bit into the valleys. I mean, we already cleaned most part of that lead screw when we had access from the other side. And while we are at it, uh, we can also put some grease here on the lead screw. And now we turn the whole thing and go to the other extreme position. We repeat the same game you can see how debris has accumulated on some of the ways not every one but some and of course we clean the lead screw there's a lot of dirt here on that side so i will use the brush Don't forget to vacuum. And while we are at this side, we can also lubricate our screw. And I'm reaching under here and inside. Uh, 
and of course lubricate the ways. Oh, see, I forgot to clean something. Now flipping the whole thing again and repeating for the ways from the other on the other side. And finally, uh, I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, we're going back to the middle position. Wipe off any excess grease. And this can go back on the milling machine. That's it for today. Hopefully, <laughs> after time lapsing most of the stuff, this will be a very short video. Anyway, next week we will continue with our steering wheel rudder jock project. Till then, bye.